I'd like to welcome everybody to a series of videos that we're doing. Um, we've got a group of food service professionals gathered because we are in a bit of a crisis uh, with the restaurant industry. We've identified some opportunities and we know that people are needing to transition their full service establishments temporarily to delivery um, or pickup options. And so knowing the challenges that these restaurants are going to face, uh, we've gathered several experts to uh, discuss uh, some topics that we've identified as being extremely pertinent and time sensitive. So I'm gonna go around and have you introduce yourselves. I'll go first. Uh, my name is Luke and I've been in the marketing brand building side of the industry for quite some time um, and um, hope to bring value on the social side uh, so that operators can get their message and their offerings out to the audience. Uh, Mike Mararchy, I'm a, uh, a non-foods uh, person for over 30 years, uh, also uh, in uh, distribution uh, business as well on the distribution side um, from wholesalers to, uh, from manufacturers to wholesalers and, um, but mostly the non-foods. Hello, I'm Brody Swedberg. I have nine years of food service experience, ranging from selling across the country um, in both uh, a sales capacity and a marketing capacity. And Tim? Tim Labonte, um, a chef, and I have been uh, in kitchens for nearly 30 years now. Gentlemen, if we can dive right into this, our goal is to create some concise nuggets on a few topics that hopefully operators can take something away from uh, to help their business, as I said, during uh, this challenging time. So our first topic is we're dealing with the need to transition from full menus to uh, maybe limited uh, delivery uh, menus and the challenges that uh, operators are going to face while doing that. And uh, Tim, if I'm going to have you kick this off first, because I know sure. uh, this is something you've been thinking about. Yeah, um, you know, obviously not, not, not an easy transition for anybody, especially with uh, the time frame of a snap of a finger, um, ultimately. But for me, I think the, not that there's an easy way to do this, but I think it all has to do with taking a little bit of time, whether it be a couple hours and, you know, inventorying what you have and what you have to work with at that particular point. And, uh, you know, taking another hour and sitting down with your team and, and creating a, a menu that you can produce uh, consistently in as few steps as possible uh, with potentially as little step as possible. Um, I also think that a big key to successfully doing this is, is being very limited in your menu selections. Um, what, what you want to put out there, what, uh, what speaks to your platform, uh, what are customers looking for when they're coming or um, ordering takeout from you or having delivery from you, what, what are their expectations? Hold true to who you are. Don't reinvent the wheel. Keep doing what you're doing, but only do it very limited. Um, because ultimately some places you'll see 20, 30 menu items and, uh, just to go into it with the mindset that you want to produce all those items before your takeout, uh, grab and goes or, or whatever it may be is just, it might be too much to take on, um, at, at this point. So do your inventory, make your menus, and then, uh, just put it into motion at that point. Um, but but stay true to who you are. Look, it's a situation that everybody's in. So uh, no matter what part of the food and beverage industry you work in, everybody's in it together. And everybody wants everybody else to succeed. So I think that, you know, with the restrictions that are being set forth for the food and beverage industry, um, I, I would like to assume that clients of a particular um, establishment are going to be very open to um, what they have and, and very welcome to support them. I, I think people are looking to get out of the house, you know, that we're, we're already stuck for a few days in the house. And I think people are looking to get out to do something 
and to pick up a meal certainly could be one of those things. And I think that um, operators, um, like like uh, Tim said, I think is important to focus your menu, but then also, uh, you know, how do you how do you offer something that uh, that is in that wheelhouse that could maybe make things uh, nicer or better for your uh, people, such as you know we we've heard of a pizza parlor that's offering a pizza kit, uh, and they're selling that so that. Uh, the folks that are going to pick up, they'll pick up a pizza kit and go home and make that together as a family. Um, or, you know, if you have, a, if you're an Italian restaurant and you make sauce, you may want to consider selling your sauce bulk uh, and allowing customers to just buy that. So you, the, there needs to be some creativity around the things that you do do well and then how think about a different way maybe to package those items and sell them uh, and offer, you know, even bulk soups, I think would be a popular item if, if you can uh, put those in the right containers and be able to sell those out um, as well. So um, it's, it's narrowing your focus and then getting creative on how you present that to your customers as well. And Rody? Um, I agree with both of them wholeheartedly in this. I think whatever your operation is, you need to take a good hard look at what you can reproduce consistently and effectively while still keeping your operations identity, but then to take it one step farther and make sure you can execute that by the time your customer gets that product home, because they're gonna appreciate the fact that you're open and trying, but once you once they bring it home, is it good? Is that a good representation of your operation? And so when you're scaling that menu back, uh, you may not be able to do your one signature dish because it doesn't translate well. Um, so if they, if they do their due diligence on the front end, I think regardless of urban or rural, um, find, you know what your customer base likes, you know why they're coming to you, pair it down to items hopefully that are your signature for sure, um, but that can be executed and when, you're, uh, when your customers get back, bring the product home, that they're able to enjoy it like they would at your establishment. That would be my thing. I think that's great advice from Michael and Chef Tim. I think the one final step in that is make sure that it translates once it gets to the end user's house. Um, Cause that's an important part of it. I think we've all had takeout where we've been less than impressed by the time we actually got at home. And so if you're going to make that effort, make sure that you're putting your best foot forward. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, knowing that uh, for most locations now, restaurants have been uh, told to just do takeout and delivery we're probably looking at restaurants that want to continue to serve their customers that haven't traditionally done a big takeout or any delivery business whatsoever. So they're now having to consider uh, packaging challenges to, as you said, Brody, make their food stay uh, up to the quality that their patrons would expect. Uh, Mike, what kind of consideration do people look at? Uh, you're the non-foods expert in the packaging side. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that we say uh, before this all happened is that if you're putting a takeout packaging program together, you have to consider that um, your takeout packaging needs to mirror what you were doing inside your operation from a quality standpoint. So if you're a fine dining establishment that your wait your waiters, you know, they use tu they wore tuxedos and you offer fine dining and you served on fine china and 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 the like you would want your takeout packaging to mirror that. And so it's not much different here where now all of a sudden you're transitioning to 100% takeout and now delivery services become that much more important because you'll be utilizing them. So there's a, a few considerations. And that is, first of all, the, the quality of the food that gets to where it's going needs to be able to hold up and be as close as possible as in the dining room. Uh, now you do have some limitations because sometimes it takes longer for that food to get to, you know, to the home than it would in a restaurant, but you want to try to keep the integrity and quality as, as good as possible from the time it, it leaves your restaurant until the time it gets home and the time it's enjoyed. So the quality of the packing it, packaging is really important. Um, and depending on the type of food that you're putting in there, so for example, if you're putting French fries in, in a foam takeout container uh, and it's going to sit for 40 minutes, which is entirely possible, you're not going to have a good quality product at the end of the, the line. So you may want to consider a, a container uh, that's either opened on top 
or has venting of some type to allow the steam to escape and allow the uh, French fries to, to be better tasting at the end of the day. Um, and I, so I think you, depending on what your menu looks like, and you could certainly work with your, your, your DSR on this uh, to find packaging that's going to complement what you're doing on the food side so that you get from point A to point B as, uh, as, as good as possible. Uh, the one other consideration I would suggest is you really need to think about food security uh, because now your, your, your food is uh, in, in many cases going to be delivered by a delivery service possibly. And if that's the case, uh, we know that 28% of Uber drivers admitted eating food out of the, out of the uh, bag, you know. So uh, if we know that's the case, then we really have to be careful, especially in these times, that your food is secure. And, and there's many different things that are now coming out, um, that many different products that are available for you to be able to make sure that your food is secure. And it could be as simple as putting a piece of masking tape over the bag to make sure that you know it, it's some type of a seal. Uh, and and it's, if that masking tape is broken, then you, know, you, you will know that maybe it, it's been tampered with. So, um, that would be my recommendation on the container side of it. I think that's a great takeaway. Um, and if we're offering bullet points to any operators that are, are watching this, um, ask your, your DSR, ask your sales rep um, from your distributorship what security options they have available for food. I know there are new bags that have hit the market that have a, a seal on the top. I know that there are uh, labels that kind of um, break apart if you try to tamper with them. Uh, there are options out there, and if nothing else, you know, put it in that brown paper bag and and staple it right up. But at the end of the day, I think um, to bring a social aspect into this, I think it's very important for operators to to go to their social channels and share how they're packaging their food, uh, show any precautions that they're taking, and and really set uh, the minds of their customer at ease. Uh, with the preparation, the packaging, and the delivery of their food. Right. And anybody have any other thoughts on uh, transitioning from the full service menu to a meal delivery uh, menu? Uh, Tim, any final thoughts on? Yeah, I would definitely like to add to that. Um, you know, I, I personally believe that uh, the the price points that uh, you offer your food at are going to make a. Um, a big selling point as well. I mean, <clears throat> for me, when I go out for dinner, which is not very often, like when it's a nice dinner on a Saturday night with my wife, we have no problem spending $120 on dinner for two where we're just like having multiple courses where I just really think that as we're in a really strict plan B, I don't know if you, no matter what level you're at, are gonna be able to ask for those same price points so i think uh just just be diligent and uh be cautious with with your pricing and 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 that translates to when you're preparing your menu for for this grab and go and, and delivery service as, as well you know just be very cognizant of the, the price points because i think that'll make a big difference for and that kind of translates into your packaging as well i mean if you're getting like really high-end packaging that's great. Your food deserves it if you feel if you feel that way, but that's going to translate into the price that you're going to have to charge your 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 customers as well. And uh, you know, I, I I hate to say this is an opportunity, but you know, it's an opportunity. This right now is an opportunity in the stage that we're in for them to have repeat customers because. A lot of people aren't going to have huge stockpiles of food in their freezers. Some, some will. Some are going out there and buying 12 gallons of milk, but others won't. So they might be using these services a little more frequently than they would be dining out. So to keep that in mind as well, I think might be um, a good point. It's, it's really becoming a matter of trust. In, in, uh, if you can trust that the location you're getting your food from um, in the operation is first of all maintaining sanitation properly um, and as well as taking steps to make sure that um, you're not uh, they're not uh, contributing to the spread of the virus if you can gain your trust in that and you can gain your trust in the fact that the food is delicious you're 
Tim is absolutely right. You'll, you'll gain customer loyalty. I think there's an opportunity there with both. I think um, as if food service operators are being honest about the cost of packaging, especially if they don't traditionally do a delivery or takeout business, uh, I think customers will be okay with that. If you put, you know, a $3, you know, packaging charge on there and you just tell people, hey, you know, this is what it's gonna cost to get you our quality food in the way that you want to eat it, I, I think they'll be okay with that. What do you think? I would agree 100%. And I think it's, uh, we see that all around is transparency. People want transparency in their food. Um, you had a great point where, you know, bring, if, or um, I believe Mike did, um, trustworthiness of the establishment. People are, I'm going to go where I, I know the kitchen's clean. The food is consistently good. Um, we've got a few restaurants like that around where I live. I would have no problem if they did the takeout part of it correctly um ordering that and then understanding the pricing aspect of it this is there's a convenience tax on this stuff and i think everybody who's going to be ordering out and doing takeout is is well aware of that it's not business as usual right now um but the more transparent an establishment can be from hey this is our clean kitchen we've had our staff is healthy um feels good i think that kind of stuff even if it feels a little bit like over communicating is not necessarily a bad thing right now, especially with the regulars. It helps uh, help people feel good. It's a weird time. So if you can help some of your customers feel good about the decision they've made to come um, buy your food, then I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, clarity. Yeah, clarity in what you're doing is huge. There's an opportunity, um, I think, in using video now more than ever. Uh, to show people behind the curtain, to show them your operation. And you don't have to beat it over the head, but if they see you in your video putting on gloves or wearing gloves where you're packaging that food, that's going to be extra security uh, in the back of their minds. And again, we don't, have to, we don't have to beat it over the head that we're doing all these things. Um, you know, I don't, not, not to say you're going to take a thermometer and check all your employees on Facebook Live, might not be a bad thing to show. I don't know, maybe it's too extreme. But the idea is just show them behind the curtain and give them that sense of confidence. And I really, my last thought on this, on, on the marketing side of it is, to Brody's point, we are in a, a weird situation. You know, there is no rule book for this. I think people, we need to make it as easy as possible for people to place these to-go orders, to read the menus, uh, to Tim's point of, of simplifying your menu and really going to your strengths is key. And when you're looking at your pricing, um, maybe try to just round to the nearest dollar. You know, let's cut out all the 95 cents, you know, $1.39, whatever it's going to be. Just make it, if it's $9.99, you know, make it $10. If it's $19.99, make it $20. And just keep it simple so when people look at this, they can make quick decisions, they're not doing a bunch of math in their heads, and they know that they can feed a family of two, five, whatever, and this is what it's going to cost them. That's what the delivery cost is. Everybody's clear, everybody's happy, and everybody gets food. And uh, one point to that, Luke, as well, um, one of the things that uh, restaurants should consider is a prepay option uh, so that they're not handling money, because uh, obviously the lead, the, the, the more you can reduce the amount of handling back and forth, the better. And so if you offer a prepay option for takeout and delivery, then you're eliminating that one extra handling of the money back and forth or the credit card or whatever. So I would highly recommend uh, doing prepay uh, for, for your takeout and delivery. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's something that if you don't have an online ordering system set up, you know, you can take the card over the phone. If you want to go that extra step, there are uh, services out there where you can download and people can use things like Apple Pay or Venmo or Android Pay and, and those types of services. Um, this is a, a time to get creative, to come up with solutions that are going to work for your customer base uh, and then get your, your message out there. I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next topic now. Oh, go ahead, Brody. I did have one more point to that. Just to kind of wrap it up, I think it's an important one. Everybody on this call um, understands the, the importance that food can play as far as even healing, bringing people together. 
If an operation takes the time and does the takeout delivery process correctly, they have a wonderful opportunity to help people in their communities feel normal again, bring some normalcy to really kind of a, an odd situation, something that's unprecedented and very few people have ever experienced anything like it. So I, I wanted to bring up that point because that is something that can really help communities if they do it correctly. Um, and I think it'll, it'll establish loyalty and all the other good things along with that. So awesome. That's a great point. 